Next, we'll talk about antimicrobial therapy, or the drugs used to fight the bacteria that we've just finished discussing. Antimicrobials target bacteria through various mechanisms of action. Penicillin, methicillin, ampicillin, piperacillin, cephalosporins, astreonum, and imipenems all block cell wall synthesis by inhibition of peptidoglycan crosslinking. Antibiotics such as bacitracin and vancomycin block peptidoglycan synthesis. Sulfonamides and trimethoprim block nucleotide synthesis. The fluoroquinolones block DNA topoisomerases. Rifampin blocks mRNA synthesis. Metronidazole damages DNA. Protein synthesis is the target of other antimicrobials such as chloramphenicol, macrolids, clindamycin, and streptogramins, such as quinupristin and dalfopristin, as well as linozylids. Aminoglycosides and tetracyclines also block protein synthesis, but at the 30S ribosomal subunit, whereas the drugs that we just discussed here will block protein synthesis at the 50S ribosomal subunit. Penicillin is a prototypical beta-lactam antibiotic. It works by binding to the penicillin binding proteins, blocking transpeptidase crosslinking of the cell wall and activating autolytic enzymes. They are effective against gram-positive organisms and syphilis. Adverse events are classically hypersensitivity reactions ranging from a rash to anaphylaxis and induction of hemolytic anemia. While penicillin can be used to treat a wide variety of bacteria, there are many bugs that are better treated with more potent alternatives. That said, there are also some bugs that are classically still treated with penicillin, particularly in pregnant women, where many antimicrobials become potentially teratogenic. A classic example of this is the treatment of syphilis in pregnant women, where systematic desensitization is used to ultimately treat women with penicillin if they have a syphilis infection, since there are few acceptable alternatives. Bacteria who express penicillinase, also known as beta-lactamases, are resistant to this drug, an unfortunate emerging trend that prevents the routine use of penicillin in clinical settings. These antibiotics have the same mechanism of action as penicillin, but with the added benefit of penicillinase resistance because of their bulkier R groups. Bacteria develop resistance to these antibiotics when their penicillinase is able to cleave the beta-lactam ring of these antibiotics. Clinically, these antibiotics have utility against Staph aureus, although again, it should be emphasized that bacterial resistance to even these modified antibiotics warrants consideration of alternative antibiotics when treating resistant strains. MRSA, for example, demonstrates an altered penicillin binding protein site and cannot be treated with penicillins or similar antibiotics. Like penicillin, adverse reactions include hypersensitivity and, specific to methicillin, interstitial nephritis. These antibiotics also share penicillin's mechanism of action, but have broader spectrum of coverage when combined with clavulonic acid. These drugs are used for gram-positive bacteria and gram-negative rods. The use of ampicillin and amoxicillin against gram-negative rods has particular clinical significance. The mnemonic helps kill enterococci is helpful in remembering the organisms against which these antibiotics are effective. Haemophilus influenza, E. coli, Listeria monocytogens, Proteus mirabilis, Salmonella, and Shigella. Bacteria with beta-lactamases develop resistance against these drugs. These drugs have the same mechanism as penicillin, but with extended spectrum. They are considered anti-pseudomonals for their activity against this particularly devastating bacteria. Beta-lactamase inhibitors are added to penicillin antibiotics to prevent breakdown by penicillinase. They can be remembered by the mnemonic CAST, which stands for clavulonic acid, sulbactam, and tazobactam. Cephalosporins are beta-lactam drugs that inhibit cell wall synthesis. Like penicillins, they exhibit bactericidal activity against bacteria, but are less susceptible to penicillinase. The cephalosporins are grouped into four generations, each with different characteristic activity against bacteria. The first generation cephalosporins include cephazolin and cephalexin. 
These antibiotics affect gram-positive cocci, Proteus, E. coli, and Klebsiella. Remember these bacteria by the mnemonic PEC. Second-generation cephalosporins, cefoxetin, cefaclor, and cefroxime, are effective against gram-positive cocci, and Haemophilus, Enterobacter, Neisseria, Proteus, E. coli, Klebsiella, and Serratia. Use the hen pex mnemonic to help you remember these. Third-generation cephalosporins include ceftriaxone, cefotaxime, ceftazidime, and are used to treat resistant gram-negative infections. Ceftazidime, of note, is used against pseudomonas infections. Cefepim is a fourth-generation cephalosporin with increased activity against pseudomonas and gram-positive organisms. There is a 5 to 10 percent cross-reactivity between cephalosporins and penicillins, so cephalosporins should be used with caution in patients who report an allergy to penicillins. Astrionum is a monobactam that inhibits cell wall synthesis. Benefits of use include synergy with aminoglycosides and the absence of cross-reactivity with penicillins, giving it utility in patients with renal insufficiency and penicillin allergy. Estrionum has limited utility as it is only effective against gram-negative rods. Imipenem is a carbapenem with broad-spectrum activity and resistant to beta-lactamase. It is always administered with xylostatin, which inhibits renal dihydropeptidase 1, thus decreasing the drug's inactivation by renal tubules. Use the mnemonic that with imipenem, the kill is lastin with xylostatin. Meropenem, on the other hand, does not require co-administration with xylostatin. These drugs are effective only against gram-positive cocci, gram-negative rods, and anaerobes. They are typically restricted antibiotics and are reserved for particularly resistant organisms and life-threatening infections. Vancomycin is a bactericidal antibiotic that inhibits cell wall mucopeptide formation by binding d ala d ala portions of cell wall precursors. Vancomycin is only effective against gram-positive bacteria, but has particular utility against Staph aureus and C. difficile, the organism which causes pseudomembranous colitis. The classic toxicities associated with vancomycin are nephrotoxicity, autotoxicity, and thrombophlebitis. Also, red man syndrome, the latter of which is seen more frequently with rapid infusions of vancomycin.